And we got beers? Good. Anybody want any tequila? No, no. nobody wants your nobody national wants drink. Nobody wants I love tequila. Oh. You want some? <laughs> I want to lay it. I really I won't like sleep it. I like it chilled too. I like that arm crawl. Oh, on the rack. That helps. Yeah, 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 that's what I mean. Like on like a nice ice cube. But. All right, want me to give a brief um, introduction? Like, yes, uh, please. Bump the cameras. Once we're on, because yeah. I, I I don't I, know, I gotta wait for it. I don't I don't even remember talking yeah. about a guest until it's today. Cool. <laughs> no, we talked was about I, it yesterday. Talk about it. Was I hammered? Probably. <laughs> All right. No, you were in a mood yesterday. What was it? A little bit. Was I? Yeah, a little bit. Well, that's because you say dumb shit. No, I didn't. You're a real piece of trash. I was actually really nice to you. No, you weren't. When are you ever nice I to literally anybody? I said, Brent, we're going to agree on this. And you said, I don't agree at I all. Oh, because I, 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 I don't want to. Because I because I gotta turn you up. Because Iggy Azalea is a piece of white trash. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't want to fight that Australian klutz. Are you from Michigan? I am. Okay, cool. Here you go, bud. So no mic for me Enjoy. tonight. Enjoy. Yeah. Nah, it's just not as good. Yeah, talk to that piece of shit. I mean, total pull, right? Shut up. <laughs> Thinks he's on top. <laughs> so are you, are you staying with Jake? No, uh, no. His, his in laws live in Gold Beach. Oh, okay, he's cool. married to <laughs> wife's sister. And <laughs> wife's sister. So there's another, there's three daughters. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Who is she married to? <laughs> that you never met her. Am I confused? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought. <laughs> is the oldest sister. Did I? What are Did you I just make up? I thought he was gay. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody say that or did I make that up? <laughs> you motherfucker! <laughs> you're a real piece of shit. He said he couldn't say your name and you couldn't say where you were at because he uh, gay. Don't say, don't tell or whatever. Don't he was don't making tell. a joke. <laughs> don't, don't tell. I fell for that hook on a sinker. Yeah, you did, you idiot. God. I told Amanda we were having a gig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. The one thing he reads is the one thing he read. The check. one thing he reads is the joke that West my, House. Dude, my bad, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> yeah, Phil. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, I'm friends with a gay army Green Beret. Nighthawk. Yeah. 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 Night, no, no, Nighthawk. <laughs> Nightcock. Nightcock. <laughs> That's hilarious. You thought that was real. Well, you know, you're a man and your word means nothing to me anymore. Hey. All right. Oh. Hey, welcome. Zero idea. Episode what? 100? Who cares? Probably, probably 100. Getting in there. Getting in there. But uh, we have a special guest tonight. He's off cam because he's currently engaged in some top secret stuff for the military. And uh, his name is Nighthawk. We're going with Nighthawk tonight. But um, Nighthawk, Nighthawk. Thanks for coming. He's times. got a very, very unique perspective on the world and the war, all the wars. He was a Marine for a while. He came back home, became a cop for a while, and then went back into special forces with the Army, which is just absurd to me. I don't know <laughs> why anyone would want to do that, but uh, he did it. So hey, man, thanks for coming, and you can yeah. tell us the rest of the the rest of the story. <laughs> it's all you. It's all you. Fucking Captain America right. over here. That's yeah. So awesome. if you want to elaborate on that a little bit, tell us your tell us your story. How'd you get here? Okay. Um, first off, I got to say, I'm not that cool. <laughs> I wish I was. I keep trying to be really cool. Same. And uh, I don't think I've quite reached it yet. Dude, I've been trying to fit in for 36 years. It just doesn't work sometimes. <laughs> Capitals and dolphins don't match. Go th- it's go draft figure. night, you piece of shit. Go Give me a break. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Anyways, sorry. <laughs> no, uh, joined the Marine Corps right out of high school. I was in for four years, two trips to Afghanistan. Terrible place. Uh, got out. I to try my hand in the civilian world. You know, police officer because I wanted something with action. Uh, as it turns out, that wasn't quite a good fit for me. I wasn't quite a good fit for it. Uh, had some good times, met some good people. Uh, where, where were you, a police officer? Southern Maryland. Oh, down here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. They probably pulled them other ones. I probably did. I mean, how boring was that? Probably after just uh, like running radar yeah. after Afghanistan. At, yeah, it's I'm probably, pretty sure you got stuck down in Lexington Park, right? Doing some oh, bad yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that's, then, I mean, that's the place to be. Now I. I avoided pulling south traffic. Of, south of Peg Road. Just south of Peg yeah, Road. You never pulled over anybody, right? I avoided it as much as I could. Yeah. And who wants to do paperwork, I bro? knew you can do that. Exactly. I knew you can do that. As a, as a police officer, you don't have to pull over everyone. Well, unless you're just a patrolman, then that's your fucking job. That would be a state trooper, I think, Pretty right? much. I mean, state troopers uh, are just, they just make money for the state. That's all they're doing. <laughs> so, all right. So, you left that. <clears throat> yeah, I left that after a couple of years. Uh, joined the Army. And went to Special Forces Selection, got selected, went through the qualification course, uh, got my tab, got my beret, and then Fuck yeah. now I am... My tab, a, my beret. So for people that are really dumb and don't know anything... Well, not even that. Is, is you don't different? have to be dumb, but you just, you just don't, don't know. know. Yeah. Yeah. I actually yeah. don't know what the tab part means. So, yeah. I know, I know, so we all know what the beret tab. part means. I got my tab. What is that? Okay. So in an Army uniform, on your left shoulder, you wear your unit patch, the patch or the unit that you're assigned to. 
And then above that, you can wear certain tabs or so it looks like a bar across it and usually it'll have words. Um, so like if you're a part of an airborne unit, a part of your unit patch will be an airborne tab. That's what uh, they call it. Okay, okay. So then if you've been to certain schools or you have certain qualifications, then those are additional tabs above. So if you've been to ranger school, you get a ranger tab. If you complete the special forces qualification course, you get a special forces tab. Uh, if you're part of the president's hundred, which is part of the, like, uh, it's a marksmanship thing. Uh, they get one. And then I believe also sapper school, uh, you get a sapper tab for that as well. Okay. Okay. So got you. How many tabs do you currently hold? Oh, just two. No, no, no. Yeah, well, I, mean, I, got a, I got a few open somewhere. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't, look, don't look at the open tabs on my phone. Man. I got quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> I just kick an ass over here. I'm jerking off. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, moving on from there, the beret part. Are there different color studs or is there just literally, is it just called a green beret? So for us, if you are, if you're a graduate of the special forces qualification course and you are assigned to a special forces unit, then you wear a green beret and only graduates of the course, the Q course and assigned to an, a special forces unit are allowed to wear the green beret. Uh, if you're part of an airborne unit, again, along with airborne tab, you also wear a maroon beret. So they have their own beret. Uh, Rangers have a, a sand tan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tan beret. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Old tambourine. Um, tambourine. That kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> My green tambourine. <laughs> so, um, so that's weird. I mean, there's not a lot of people that have done kind of high level Marines and high level army. I think you're kind of more high level in the army for sure. What, what mm-hmm. was harder? What, what basic training was harder? Cause you had to start over in the army, right? They didn't just accept you being a Marine. They weren't like, all right, we can put right. you at this rank and you're, you know. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you go back to like straight up regular Boot camp? So I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> so I enlisted in the army as part of the uh, 18 x-ray program, which that's a program where you can enlist off the street and it sets you up on a track to go to special forces selection. And then if you get selected, you go on to the training in the Q course and then onto a special forces unit. Um, part of that is going to infantry basic training because the army has different types of basic trainings depending on what your job is going to be. Did you um, know right away what you wanted to do? Absolutely. Yeah. That was the only yeah. reason you went in, right? Like you right. had one focus. I knew exactly yeah. what I wanted to do. And that was uh, uh, special Rams. forces. So, okay. you, so you were, so you were that bored in civilian life. You're like, I got to get back. I got to <laughs> exactly. go. Okay. Weren't you just a police officer just because you were waiting for the selection or no? I can't, uh, I remember something like that. I had thought about it. Like as soon as I got out of the Marine Corps, I was trying to, I, I was working in that direction. I'd already talked to a recruiter, but there were just delays in the paperwork. Uh, I mean, I was married. I didn't really have a lot of time to just kind of kick it and wait and hope. Right. Uh, so eventually I moved on, uh, again, decided to try my hand at civilian life and got real bored with that. So eventually, <laughs> yeah, like, you it's know pretty what? It's like, let me, as we all three sit it's not like knocking down jihadis. It's, it's, you know, busting down. Just knocking down honey. <laughs> <laughs> he would hate my life so bad. <laughs> he would hate it. He would hate all of our lives. No, I mean, uh, nah, yeah. Right. So, marine snipers are they the best shot in the in the all the military or what in the world? By no, not anymore. No, he's an army guy now. Oh, uh, do the marines look at you different? Once a marine, always a marine. Are they like not you, bud? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. No, what do they think no. about you? They just double I'll look dipping, at him in his little green beret. <laughs> oh. My daughter has one. <laughs> like, what, what do they do? They talk shit. Right. <laughs> No, I mean, everybody's pretty good natured. Um, there's actually a lot of Marines that come over to army special forces. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the Marine Corps, they have their own stuff. Uh, like they have stepping, right? The, the Marines and kind of just step up to that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so Marines don't really have a good special unit is what you're saying. Special they forces do. They, they, they do, actually but, do. Okay. They actually do. Which one? Um, what, what's that? So they have uh Marine, I believe it's Marine Recon forces, special operations okay. command. Oh. MARSOC. Um, yeah. I mean, they have, that's pretty cool. Marlac. <laughs> it's like Sorry. Yeah. So the, I mean, they've had uh, the reconnaissance community has been around for a while. They have force recon. Those guys are real high speed. Uh, they do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, some pretty, pretty tough training. Um, but then in 2006, they stood up Marine Corps special operations command. Uh, now they're called Raiders. Um, <gasps> That's what I want to. Yeah, yeah but it's, you want to be a Las cool. Vegas Raider. Yeah. That is pretty sweet. Am I too but late? Like, is thirty six too late? That does happen a lot. Where like Marines, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, will either like go back in and either go the SEAL route or the beret route, right? That yes, a ton of like. Okay. Yes. So when I got out of the Marine Corps, Marsoc was still a, kind of a new thing. 
Uh, it wasn't really sure which direction they were going to be going in. Uh, I had some friends that were in recon. I talked to them. They had a little bit better knowledge of it. And uh, they, they just really suggested like, hey, man, if that's what you want to do, go to the Army, try out for Special Forces. Because, I mean, Special Forces has been around since 1952. Like, they're pretty established. Uh, they know what they're doing. And like, that's, they're, like I said, they're just more established. So what'd you do in Afghanistan and segue that into how did you feel the way we left Afghanistan? Okay. Wow. That's, there's a so, lot of time. So, okay. There's a lot of time. Covering <laughs> yeah, so what did you do in Afghanistan? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, we, don't, we don't need the gory details. Just, you know, no, I'm saying, you give us whatever He's details you want. Yeah, uh, Nighthawk can tell us what he wants. Nighthawk can do yeah. whatever he wants. Nighthawk does what Nighthawk wants. And, and the night, Nighthawk rules. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, my first, like I said, I'm not that cool. My first deployment, I was a Humvee driver. Oh, uh, that's pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> like rolling the dice every time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would, I would, are we talking? I would never want to be in the lead one ever. No. <laughs> that was actually me. <laughs> was was I, was actually just to I would just drive, <laughs> I would drive in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's broke down. It's yeah. fine. We shouldn't actually, but I mean, it was pretty, it's scary. It was that's funny. super scary. Yeah, I mean, it's a terrifying it, job. It got a little stressful at times. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I was just driving a Humvee. This was 2008 time frame, uh, Helmand yeah. Province. Hot and heavy all the time. Yeah. So we actually, uh, where I was at, the time I was there, uh, I mean, because everybody has different experiences, even if you go to the same place. Like, if you're there at a different time, totally different experience. Right. Uh, when I was there, it was actually not very kinetic. So uh, our main threat, obviously, was IEDs. Uh, we did have a few ID strikes. Uh, those were, some of those were pretty bad, especially on, on Humvees cause they're not designed to take a blast. Right. Um, then we also, we took mortar fire a couple of times, which is incredibly terrifying. Yeah. It doesn't really, I can't imagine. Do do? Like, yeah, exactly. You can't really run anywhere. It's just kind of like, all right, that's terrifying. Oh, you just be like living live and you need to take cover and there's suddenly just stuff's coming in. Does it, ever run, does it ever run through your, your mind that like they're using mortars and stuff that we gave them in the eighties? You know, I had thought about that. Um, <laughs> He's a history buff too. You know, yeah, I mean, oh like yes. Oh yeah. I mean, if I was driving a Humvee, I'd be super mad at the freaking like breaking. Oh yeah, like, of course. Like, change, like, you know. <laughs> I mean, of course. Change. We were trying to help, but, and, but also try to, you know. Where are we? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> we're always trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to Ollie North. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff they were using was uh, old Soviet stuff that they had. Okay. Um, Which is funny because they're still, the Soviets are still using the old Soviet stuff, too. <laughs> no, I good. don't know that that I is like true, that. but maybe. No, they have hackers now. They do. That, that's the one difference. That's one of the reasons you can't be on camera. But, I mean, we were talking about in the cars. Like, the other, other, our, our adversaries have stepped up their technological game so much now that they, they're using facial recognition Do I need, like, a vocoder thing? Everywhere, you know? Whew, man, they better not get into my Reddit account. <laughs> they're not looking for you, bud. Okay. They're not looking for you. I'm pretty poor, guys. guys. In country, they're going to kill people. Well, so. he, is, he is a little crack in the arm, isn't he? So. <laughs> what? Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Weak link in the... Yeah, he works at home. <laughs> yeah. That's sick security at home. Yeah. That's working out probably really well. I can't get through that. Hey. <laughs> I support the warfighter, God damn it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's your password? Be lethal. <laughs> yeah. You want my CAC password? I'll give it to you. Okay. So Humvee driver, um, what were you out there a whole year? Uh, I wound up being about six months. Six months. You yeah. made it through nothing. I mean, how'd your unit fare? Pretty good. Pretty bad. Um, I mean, was there one tight butthole situation that you were in like driving? I'm sure there always it felt a little scary, yeah. but like, did something actually go off while you were out? Uh, so it was actually one of our first weeks where we actually started pushing out, uh, from the main fob at the beginning. Uh, we took some mortar fire while we were just. We're sitting in a circle, you know, just taking a break. Uh, I mean, we're still in the Humvee, thankfully. And we saw like just an explosion uh, a couple hundred meters away. And we're like, oh, should we move? All right. Yeah. So I think we're in a fire. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. They're like dialing it in. Right. <laughs> it's still, that's exactly what. Further. Do you start shooting like where you think it's coming from or what do you do? Like, what do you do right away? No, you, I mean, you can't because yeah. I mean, you they're could, like over the mountains somewhere. Yeah. You don't know where they are. You don't know, uh, most of the time they're going to have an observer somewhere that's talking them on mm. and they're going to be somewhere way beyond where you're not going to be able to touch them. Yeah. Mm, a little so. further, Muhammad. Yeah. And then you got, well, I would just probably drive <laughs> forward and reverse constantly, just back and forth. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what, that's exactly what we did. Cause really? look at me. Yeah. Cause you, again, you don't know where the next one's coming. Right. 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 I mean, you 
for all you know, like you can move 10 feet to the right and be right under the thing when it comes I down. No. So it's just. Right. It's kind of hard. It's a little like bit moving. You can keep moving. Like real the quick. jaw. It's a little yeah. Yeah. Mortars aren't designed to be accurate though, are they? Oh, they're very accurate. Oh, yeah. Really? As long as you have the target. Okay. And a good. As long as you know like the the. I coordinates. thought they were just designed just to. Lots and quick. No, dude, they, uh, they know no. exactly. They practice all the time. Yeah. Like that's what they used to say in the spotter. There's some guy in the mountains saying, uh, ten degrees left, four degrees okay. north, or whatever they, whatever they're saying." Shows my ignorance. I, I, I honestly thought it was just like, hey, if you hit uh, something good, that's, that's what they deal. train for, like all the time. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. All right, so you made it out. That's sweet. And then second second deployment. Yeah. So in between my first and second deployment, I uh, got the opportunity to go to Marine Corps Scout Sniper Course, which was uh, kicking the nuts. <laughs> yeah, really? great, great time, great training, but kicking the nuts. Is that when you're like in the woods? Why, why? They're trying to see you, and if you get spotted, you're you're out or something like that. Yeah, that's yeah, part that of it. Sounds terrible. Was that you like can't a move kicking like the nuts to your like ego? Is that what you're saying? Or no, like, no, no. They, like it was just tough. They made it physically difficult, ah. which it's the whole point. I mean, it's uh, it's part selection process, part training. Uh, so like the instructors saw themselves as like, Hey, we're here to assess you, to decide if you should be a Marine Corps scout sniper. Um, and then if we decide that you are, then you have to, sh- or, we, or if we decide that you have the right stuff, then you still have to pass all the tests and you still have to show that you have the capability before you actually graduate. Um, so yeah, it, we did a lot of stupid stuff. Uh, lots of, lots of PT. Uh, just getting smoked for no reason. <laughs> Wolf. That stuff's terrible. I mean, it, it's terrible. But so, so the graduate process, like what was the final test? Like, was it a real shooting like activity? I mean, it's drop you somewhere <clears throat> say, get back. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> you're, you're being graded the whole time you're there. You have like a bunch of different tests as you go. Um, uh, so like one of the first things you do is like land navigation test. So they put you out in the swamps of, uh, for me, I was at Lejeune, so uh, swamps of North Carolina, Camp and they put you out there in the middle of the night, and like, okay, you got to go find these four stakes in the middle of the woods. See? Holy crap. Four stakes in the middle of the woods, and they marked it on some little map you had, <laughs> and you had a little headlight. I mean, they just gave you the numbers for it. And then oh the, my God, even worse, numbers. Yeah, they give you the eight-digit grid, you got to plot it on your map, and then figure you got, out a route. If that thing got a little wet, and the numbers got a little smudged, <laughs> screwed. <laughs> so, all right, God. so you do that. Uh, what uh, do do they actually put you through like a like an accuracy training like uh, accuracy test too? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure. W- well, I asked him. Can you hit this target, <laughs> <laughs> sniper boy? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that was just the first week was the uh, land navigation. Uh, then we still had it was nine weeks when I went. So, oh wow, we did another a uh, couple weeks where it was all just shooting at known distance. Uh, so you're kind of figuring out like what. Uh, what adjustments do I need to make to my scope to be able to hit at a certain distance? And you got to take in like humidity and all that stuff into effect. Yeah. So what is your <laughs> personal best distance on the target? Yeah. What's the best you got? So best. <laughs> you can lie a little bit, but not too much. Yeah, fluff them a little like bit. Like no, no, no. 102 yard, 100 yards? Yeah, sure. 100, 100 yards? No, 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 no. Add it on. Sure what it was. No, 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 no. Yeah. So the four of us getting 100 yards are asleep. Lying no, about. I yeah, can't. I can't. Kidding. Damn it. Sorry, sorry. No, I mean, we, we got heated all three of us yeah. real quick. Again, I, I got to say, I, I am not that cool. It's fine. Come on, it's I've, cool. I've gotten some, I've been very fortunate to have some really cool experiences. And uh, like I tell people, I have benefited from, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars of some of the best training you could possibly get. Like, That's what's up. If you tried to quantify that in the civilian market, like there is no way I would ever be able to afford this. Right, right Of right, course. Right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The best shot I ever made. It was on a 12 inch steel target at 1,025 meters. Oh. It was, a. Uh, it, it was what's called a, how far that is, but it's not far. So it's, it's like three quarters of a mile or so. It's, it's a little past half mile. I was about to say, yeah. So that's pretty awesome. good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It was a, it was a cold bore test. So when you take your first shot of the day, uh, your first shot out of the barrel will usually impact in a slightly different spot than the rest of your rounds. Is better or worse? It, well, it's, it's just, just going to go somewhere different because different the barrel's different. cold. Yeah. Well, I, so, mean, I got that part, but I, was, I wasn't sure if cold or warm was better. better. How that feels? It feels? No. What, cold or warm? <laughs> is it better or worse? I, I know it's I, a different spot. It's not, it's not as consistent, I think. Yeah, I, the, I don't think there's a better or worse. Okay. Um, so you just have to know your first shot for whatever reason. Uh, it, some people say it's because the barrel's cold. You haven't fired a round on the barrel yet. Some people say it's because you're a cold shooter and you haven't fired a round yet yourself. So could be a little bit of like uh 
mental factor involved with it. For whatever reason, uh, it is repeatable and it is measurable. Uh, your cold bore, uh, huh. your cold bore shot. So they teach you to track your cold bore because if you're actually taking a shot, you have to be able to know you're, you're only going to get one shot most likely. And you have to know where that's going to go. Huh. Um, so I had been tracking my cold bore and then it was a surprise thing like, Hey, cold bore test, 12 inch steel target. They told us the exact distance it was. And then, uh, between like you and your spotter, you had to figure out, all right, well, we were in two man teams. You have a shooter and a spotter. Um, and then we would alternate, uh, like my buddy would spot for me and what he's doing, he's looking through a really high magnification scope and he is, huh. I mean, he has a lot of jobs. His job <laughs> is to, uh, kind of tell me what, uh, what data I need to put on my scope. Uh, he's telling me what the wind is doing. Um, I mean, he's doing a lot of things to it. He's basically feeding me the information. My job is to get in a consistent position and squeeze the trigger and break off a clean shot. And then he watches, you can actually watch as the bullet flies through the air. Uh, the way it disrupts the air, it's called trace. Uh, so you can actually watch the path of the bullet and it's really cool. Huh. So then your spotter's job, again, he's looking through the scope and he watches your bullet fly through the air. And then depending on where that goes, if you miss, uh, he can give you your correction for uh, an adjustment you need to make to get on target. So again, like, we would, we would trade off, uh, one guy would shoot and then your buddy would spot for you and then you would switch, he would shoot and then I would spot for him. Uh, so just as it happens, uh, you know, one guy will typically be better at you know, one, of the other. one of the jobs. Yeah. yeah. So my buddy, he was much better at giving wind calls than me and <laughs> I was slightly more consistent with my shooting. <laughs> Again, the guy is a phenomenal <laughs> shot. Poor guy. I, I, I'm not. I'm not talking down. I love the this guy. And I'm yeah. better at shooting, shooting people. So, but, but, so, but here's the thing. So you say you, you take your cold bore shot and it's measurable, right? Yep. You you know, like my first shot of the day is going to be somewhere in this general vicinity, huh? Yeah. Science. So he's got, but he's also calling out weather, wind, humidity, whatever. But for your second shot, you also have to put in, huh? Your brain, your cold bore, because it's going to be different. So you have to, you, not only do you have to uh, uh, account for the weather conditions, you also have to account for your next shot's going to be probably a little bit different because the barrel. Huh. Good and then God. the target's going to be moving, and you're really not going to know how far it is most of the time, probably, too. When, in a real situation, I would imagine. Man. It's crazy. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. Fucking, fucking math, bro. So when you went, so you did that, and when you went back your second time to Afghanistan, were you, were you I mean, you were being a sniper, or were you not being used as that? Yeah, I was, uh, I was in a scout sniper team, uh, and then we would, we weren't really, uh, we weren't really doing much shooting. It just, that's just the way it was. Yeah. Again, where we were, uh, just happened to be another time where there wasn't a whole lot going on where my team was at. Other teams had a little bit more action because they were in a slightly different area, um, where I was at. So you're just watching. Yeah, honestly, that was most of it was just going out and Scouting. watching. Yeah. Now, were you doing any kind of recon or you just wait? Or were you, were you just sitting and waiting? So what we do is we'd identify areas that we wanted to know more about okay. or like the commander would decide, Hey, I want to know more about this area. And then we would go out, we would set up uh, a hide site and we would just watch and just kind of keep a log of what was going on. And then we would report it back. Obviously if we saw anything happening, we could take a shot. But again, like I, do you, it, it never, it, how hard is it to get a shot cleared? Do you, or was that on you? It, again, probably it the, depends. It's okay. probably the like longest thing. Hurry up and wait. It's like, I could take it. I could take, how many people do you think in history had a shot on Hitler? <laughs> like, <sniper laughs> Dude, they were not clearing <laughs> shots with like uh, uppers back then. Yeah, no, I think was, you went out and like you had your orders and then you, they didn't see you for a week. Uh, I would imagine. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't anybody that had Hitler in the scope. Oh, you weren't. Oh, so you were up in the hills for weeks. Well, I'm not no, talking about them. I, I, oh, sorry, oh, I jumped. Oh, I jumped way I'm talking past. like World War II sniper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking, well, I'm, not, I'm more worried about. I'm, I'm more interested in him <laughs> I, I, sitting in the hills of yeah, Afghanistan. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was taking a quick dive back. <laughs> like, all right, so let me let me ask you this: <laughs> ahead, What is your longest like tenure on it on a hillside watching? Would suck. Uh, oh. I mean, the longest we set out it was only two days. Okay, but still, jeez, write a lot of songs. You got right? like pee your pants and stuff. <laughs> yeah, think about, <laughs> think about everything. What's your favorite MRE? <laughs> So I've tried the pizza one. 
Ooh. It was a long time coming. I finally got a chance to try you it. You got it. It's not that great. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not it. as good as that, it's not as good as that weirdo on YouTube makes it sound. No, it, it is not good. Oh, that guy that tries all the old ones? He eats I the like shit that. from like the 60s and yeah, 50s. Yeah, he eats ones from like World War One and it's stuff. It's just got, you know, it's just... Oh, this graham cracker is still good. Oh, geez, that good he still smokes the cigarettes that are in there. <laughs> oh, fucking dude. weirdo, the coffee, bro. he makes it too while he's doing the other stuff. Yeah. This stuff's like falling apart. Dude, you ever see this guy? I haven't. It's pretty cool. He is pretty cool, but like... He's really, really into eating old food. It's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. It's like, of course, it tastes good to you. Right. Okay. That's you guys watching it. Yeah, no, I mean, I've watched like two. Oh, I know. I've watched dozens of this guy. Uh, I'm hooked. Because he gets MREs from all over the world. I know. It is tight. Different armies yeah. and different, like, whatever. Because you can, civilian ones. Yeah. Like, it's they look good, but he's not fooling me. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> he acts like he's goddamn Gordon Ramsay. He's like, mm, God, uh, mm, it's uh, fucking delicious. Uh, this is seven, coffee. This seventy year old fucking packet of lifesavers, man. My dad had them when he used to go out, but they were like they were zipped up in that bag. And I did try one before; and it was it was awful. When I was a kid. <laughs> well, we had we had talked. I'm hungry and adult. Like it, it might be different. Don't make fun of us, uh, Nighthawk. But like we had talked about. <laughs> Spending a couple days in the woods on your nine oh, acres. Yeah, dude, it's big, like, uh, yeah, we could do uh, buffalo. Bear. Bear. Uh, bear, bear, bear meat. meat. I want to go to bear meat. Do you like bear. exotic meats? You know, <laughs> I haven't tried too so many. <laughs> what? Uh, Mike's finished well and you like exotic meats? I would meat? love to try some bear meats. Oh, yeah, bear, bear meat would be meat. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And buffalo, bison. Well, well, you bison. Well, you bison's bison. good. You can get bison. Dude, you can bison locally. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. local bison farmers. When you're, when you're out there in, in the bush, are you allowed to, like, I said exotic kill an bison. animal and bring it back to <laughs> camp if you want? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I mean, kill a wild like antelope out in the hills of Afghanistan I mean, you can or whatever. Some stuff like squirrels and stuff, I'm sure. But I mean, you don't want to give away your position and all. But you know, if but you're you like at the squirrel, camp man. and you're just chilling and you're like, oh, let's go. They got squirrels in Afghanistan. You know, I, you know, I never saw any chipmunks. Hey, what kind of critters you see on chipmunks the hills? Are everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So that is a good question. They have dogs. Of course. And I would eat one of those. Legit. My first time over there, we were driving along, and I look out the side window, and my initial thought was. Whoa, I didn't realize they had lions in Afghanistan. <laughs> no, it was a dog. It was just a big ass dog. <laughs> massive, in a right way. Massive dog. Yeah. <laughs> like, those guys are ripped, too. Like, they got to be roided out because they are yeah. massive. It's like this buffalo right here. <laughs> it's a bison. Oh. Aren't okay. they the same thing? No. All right, so. Buffalo in Africa. So, um, political question. The oh. Afghanistan withdrawal, like, what's your thoughts on that? How'd that go, being, being that you were over there? So, again, I got to be a little bit. I have to be somewhat yeah. discreet I mean, about America, right? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Because I mean, these people are still my boss. Yeah, yeah. of course. Um, but after them, yeah, <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Not really. I'm scope. still in. I'm, oh, it's all right, Nighthawk. Your secret's safe with us. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I tell anybody. Uh, if I can be completely apolitical, okay. it was going to have to happen eventually. Yes. I mean, we got Bin Laden in 2011. The the only reason we were there is because Afghanistan was not yet able to hold itself up on its own two feet. So we were spending, you know, billions of dollars propping up this country that was never going to work. And Americans, good Americans were going over there and getting killed to help, you know, set up this, co this country that was never going to be able to stand on its own. I mean, there's a lot of reasons involved. It's a very <laughs> complex situation. We were there for 20 years and, you know, 20 years of pumping, you know, just tons of money giving them all the best equipment that we could, training them to the best of our ability. Sorry. I just busted myself right now. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> my fault, dude. I literally was opening a beer, and it hit me so hard, and they're laughing at it, so let them get it out. We're not laughing while you're talking. That's I'm very so, rude. I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. That, but let's just get it out. Like, that's what happened. The funniest thing I've seen I, in weeks. I popped myself right <laughs> in the head. I did the thing. I was giving you a, a, an opener. See, I know. I'm sorry. And you did you see yourself. it hit me? Yes. <laughs> but you're right. But you're right. I'm sorry. Okay. It, well, it had to happen at some point. It was going to exactly. happen under this administration at some point. Exactly. I mean, it should have happened 10 years before it Thank actually did. Thank you. And honestly, anyone could say, well, we should have done it slower. This, I mean... Well, we we should have. We should have. Yeah, we, we should have started. We could like, say what that. were we doing? I agree. What was it? Thirteen should have died during that. A long that? time ago. Yep. Was that was that right? Yes, yeah, thirteen. All right, so we we're not going to spend Bad too much number. time on that. So we'll skip the uh, the police portion unless you got a good story you want to tell when you're. Yeah. Any, how crazy is this area? Any crackheads like stories? So when I was when I was there, uh, I mean, it really wasn't all that. There wasn't all that much going on. Mm. From what I've heard, it has gotten a little spicier. But <laughs> hell yeah, of course it has. I mean, they, had to, coming up. they had to put a sheriff's <laughs> office. On Green Mills Road. I mean, it's a little spicy. Yeah, it's been two, two uh, shootings in the last 24 hours in Lexington Park, so that's cool. Cool. Yeah. 
CPR in progress. I love I love the fact that <laughs> I, CPR. Love it. Love I love it. the fact that there's a Shangri La drive down there too. It just makes perfect <laughs> so, sense. I- Moving on, Green Beret. Now you're like totally uh, this new level of being in the military, special forces. Do you get treated completely different by everyone else now, or is it like, you know, what are the rules like for you guys as opposed to your 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 regular old you know soldier? So it's way better. <laughs> way Hell better. Yeah. Hell yeah. So you do have a significant increase in your workload as far as like what's expected of you, what you are required to do, uh, and the level you're required to perform at. So like if you're an infantryman in the army, your sole job is to be the best infantryman that you can be. Like that is your job. You know, infantry skills inside and out. And that is your job. When you come to SF, uh, everybody on the team has that, like they're required to be able to work at the level of a like high level infantry soldier. Like you have to know that beyond that, you also have to know your specific MOS and your, your job inside that. So we have different MOSs in special forces. Uh, you have your, uh, so the, all of our MOS to start with the number 18. Um, I mean, all this is on Wikipedia. You know, if somebody listening actually wants to look it up. Uh, so you have your 18 Bravos. Those are, uh, I'm just going to be going over the uh, enlisted ones. Good, man. Uh, 18 Bravo is your, uh, your weapon sergeant. So his role is to know all of your weapons, foreign weapons, uh, be able to uh, fix a weapon if it goes down, to be able to, you know, cannibalize parts. Um, they also have a bunch of other tasks they have to do. Like they're more responsible for like building training plans for the team, building training plans for your partners. Um, and again, there's a whole lot that goes into that. Uh, they have their own roles when it comes to planning. Uh, so they, again, they have to know the entire infantry side, which I mean, they, their role kind of is more infantry ish than the rest. Um, then you have your 18 Charlie 18 C, which is your engineer. So again, not only do you have to be able to work at the level of a high level infantryman, you also have to know your engineering skills. So mm-hmm. like combat engineer. So you have to be able to do construction, uh, electrical work, which I mean, that's, that can get a little sketchy at times. Oh uh, yeah. I imagine. Uh, <laughs> And then you also have to be able to know, like, again, operate at the at the level of a high level combat engineer, like as far as like your knowledge of explosives and like charge construction, uh, being able to figure out like your safe distance from uh, from a charge. Uh, and then you also have to train your team on how to use explosives and how to do it safely. Good God. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a lot. And then the 18 Charlie is typically responsible for like the logistics and supply of the team. So when you're doing your planning, oh, that sucks. Do, <laughs> yeah, I did not want to yeah. be like logistics guy. Explosives. It generally considered the worst job on the team <laughs> is being the 18 Charlie. So yeah, you do your, um, you do all your logistics for the team. You do, excuse me. Uh, you handle all the supply for your team. You have to maintain the team's inventory. I mean, you have like a million, one point five million dollars worth of equipment generally on a team. It will vary, um, but it's a lot of property that you're responsible for, and you have to keep track of. And when you go places, you have to make sure that you have a complete list of what goes and what doesn't. It's kind of cool and kind of awful. Yeah. 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 So it's, weird. it's really ground. great when you have like a list down of everything that is supposed to go. And then you get to another country and, and you find out that your buddy, for whatever reason, was like, oh, yeah, I don't need this. I'm going to leave this behind. But I am going to take this because I really want to have this now. Oh, and, and he doesn't tell you. Up. Yeah. Oh, so then yeah. you get there. First thing you got to do is uh, get 100% accountability of all of your equipment. And you're trying to get accountability and you can't find this one thing that's on your list. It's been all day. Yeah. And then like, there's like, oh yeah, I left that behind. It's like, oh, awesome. So now. like, <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. So I can't get. Headlock. I can't do that with me. <laughs> yeah. I can't get full accountability of equipment until, you know, we get a hold of somebody back in the rear that can go get eyes on this thing and verify that it is indeed where it is supposed to be. Oh my gosh. So yeah, uh, again, 18 Charlie, Another 18 Charlie guy. Yeah. Home. It's generally considered the worst. <laughs> yeah, 18 Charlie guy. Yeah. Yeah. 18 Charlie guy. <laughs> yeah. That's some stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of work. dude. So, um, can I ask Nighthawk a question? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. So, uh, no, two, no, okay, never mind. no, he's not two questions. Two he's questions. Not he's not, allowed. Uh, how many specialized schools did you go to? And which one was the hardest? I guess the latest one was the or hardest. Not even, not even hardest, but more, I don't most even difficult. Got the, the rundown of everybody on the team, but because I don't know which which you actually were, but yeah. What? Do you, wait, what? Okay, so, the, so, so he, he, knows what he, he knows. What he, 
<clears throat> okay, so yeah, so I've gone through two of the jobs so far. There's still uh, two more general ones before you get into like team leadership. Um, so I'll finish doing that and then I'll answer your good man. Yeah, answer that one. Um, so yeah, so you have your 18 Bravo, your weapons guy, your 18 Charlie, your engineer, your 18 Delta is your medic. So these guys again have to be high level infantrymen. Uh, they also go to uh, special training where it's basically they're they're taught to the level of a paramedic plus quite a bit more. Yeah, speed run. Yeah, and they <laughs> do it in a, uh, actually about a year's year's worth of time. Yeah. They have Great. to learn all of that information. It's crazy. Yeah, they do some wild stuff. Like they get to partake in surgery, childbirth, as well as What's like the best way of, of, I don't know if you know, actually, cause you're probably not that, but take care of a gunshot wound, like the, the stomach, the abdomen or wherever else. Like what, I mean, it, what's it, the best equipment we have for that? It, it depends on where it is. Uh, if it's just to like the gut area, the best medicine is getting you to a doctor. <laughs> well, I mean, don't they like these weird gloves stuff? On like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like light it on fire? Well, see, right, see, see, <laughs> yeah, see, I've seen movies, bro. Well say, well, say you get a through and through, right? Doesn't Always hit anything major, But how do you stop the bleeding? It depends where the bleeding is. I like how Brent through and through. Like, he's yeah. like, you know, speaking the lingo. <laughs> he's seen a movie too. Dude. We've all seen movies here. Why are you, why, what is your, is your sole purpose on this planet to make me look like a dick? <laughs> You're such an asshole. No, that dolphin sure does that. <laughs> I, I'm asking like a legit question what, what, that we're all interested in, right? I mean, it was, I, I was interested in it. What's your role on the team and what's your, what's your next role going to be? And then Wes's question, I think, is good into that. Who is your well. daddy and what does he do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but you also have uh, 18 Corman. Echo, which is your communications guy. Okay. So your communications guy, again, radios, uh, beep, boop, beep. Yeah. Not <laughs> Can't wait till we get to F. <laughs> those guys, they, those guys that guy. carry all the, the telephonic equipment on their backs, yeah. right? And, yeah, and that's it's also a pretty terrible job. Like, they I have to. <laughs> yeah, dude. Remember, that, remember in, um, oh, God. Say by Ryan when the D has to like run up and bring this stupid that little was phone. Terrible. They gotta use it in a ditch and like hurry up. Like, I mean, yeah, it was super useful then, but now we got yeah, if you, better stuff. If you do your job well, nobody notices. It's like a clean window. If you clean a window really yeah. well, nobody will notice. You're right. Oh. That's the whole point. People only notice if you don't do a good job or if something goes wrong. So they get no credit when they do <laughs> something spectacular. It's only like if something goes wrong that again, it could be something atmospheric that they have no control over. It's like Oh, come on, dude. Why don't we have comms? Come on, get comms up. And then yeah, they're just getting yelled at the whole time. That's pretty much like everything, though, in every field. Like, if it, just do your job. And it's right. Not, like, it happens in, uh, you, I know you don't care about this, but there's some people out there that, that are into music and stuff. It's like the little things in music that do their job, and you don't notice them. They're yep. not overbearing. They're not whatever. You All you hear is the full sound of the band, right? Right. Sometimes you hear uh, an, a recording, and it's like the drum. Too much drums, or, or maybe just too much vocals, or maybe well, too that, much this. Well, that popped up. I texted you a couple weeks ago. I was listening to one of your old records. Yeah, was, and and I listened to it on a completely different piece of music equipment. And and I was like, heard, "There's a hammer striking something in the <laughs> yeah, background like, of this song." Yeah, we use a drill too. <laughs> <laughs> like during like yeah. a, I'm like, I, I just but you didn't notice. No, that's why not, it was buried. And, it, and, 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 the, and the record's ten years old. Yeah, I know. Maybe little things, little it, tiny it, things, doing their job right. Anyways, uh, 18F. Yeah. Um, but, uh, anyway, so those are, those, are, those are the basic MOSs when you go through the qualification course. Uh, those are the MOSs that you will have to choose uh, and which you'll get trained what in. What would you choose, Jake, out of those? Engineer. Engineer? I think I'm doing the explosives one, the first the first one. The only thing about the engineer part I wouldn't do, I, I think I'd hire one of the locals to do my supply and logistics for <laughs> me. <laughs> of course you would. Why does everybody shit on loggies, man? Jake, whatever the hoop is, I got this, it's got a big trunk. Yeah. I'm, surprised ship it. I'm surprised you didn't buy Becky's little Ford Escape and try to flip it for more than she I did. I considered it. Um, I did, but, uh, I would like to, yeah, I would, I would immediately everybody hire like, like a little kid help? to be like, listen, you're on the teams now, you're, you're in charge, <laughs> of, in you're in charge yeah. of inventory and you're in charge of telling me when I need to order some more equipment. I like that. Here's $10 though. a month. <laughs> Jesus. Right, what would you do? Uh, you. Logistics probably. Uh, not sign stuff. up for any of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what are you? I am no oh, man. What would you pick, Mike? No, what I do. The, the I, what the first one, right? It was, uh, uh, no, uh, explosives, explosives was the engineer. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. So you get the fun of doing explosives, but yeah. then you have the all downside the danger. of having to do all the <laughs> supply. How come there's not an 18 Alpha? There is. So oh. the 18 Alpha is actually the officer. Okay. Uh, so that's, oh, that's what I want. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
I didn't if, know you're, that. if you're an officer, that is the only MOS available to you. You step in as a detachment commander. Okay. And well, then, he's in charge of all, all of them then? Yes. Yep. That's it. So it's, it's honestly, easy. it is an incredibly difficult position. No, oh, yeah. Because you probably have to know all four. Yeah. And make yeah. all the decisions. <laughs> Ugh. You are, you're responsible for uh, kind of steering the team in the right direction. And then you all have mistakes. to communicate with higher you are responsible for everything the team does or doesn't do. Mm, that is so, so stressful. Yeah. I'll take the that leader. One. I'll be that one. Yeah. 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 And then, so okay, special forces, resistance. what makes us kind of unique is we, uh, besides being special forces, yeah, right, 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 right. besides being cool, no, uh, <laughs> have a cooler name. Besides being the best. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> what makes us no, different? What separates us from the rest of like, uh, us special operations, like each special operations entity has kind of their own role. Uh, to where they fit into like uh, the Department of Defense. So Special Forces was set up in 1952. Um, getting into some history here. Uh, oh, our good. mission actually comes from World War II. So World War II, uh, you know, you got all of Europe controlled by the Nazis and you got Britain standing alone. We step in uh, and we're like, okay, we don't have the ability to go after Hitler right now. But the British started working with the French resistance in France. And uh, I mean, several other countries as well, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Greece, uh, a, a bunch of different countries. Uh, the French resistance is just the one that's most well known to us. Cause that's the one that the Americans had the most contact with. Um, so uh, the, you had these resistance movements that were behind enemy lines and they were just regular people who were like, no, like we're not going to submit to the Nazis. We're going to do whatever we can to fight them. So for some of them, it was, you know, going to the factory and just deliberately messing up something that, you know, they're supposed to be building. Oh. Uh, some guys, it was as much, it was as much as like going out into the woods, like getting a rifle, uh, basically creating their own little militia and then going out and attacking German targets. Cool. So what they realized, what the British realized they could do was they could send in advisors to work with them, work with the uh, French resistance and kind of, so you don't have just a bunch of different little gangs going off and doing their own thing. Organize them. You can organize, you can coordinate. Um, so they started doing that. And then when the Americans entered the war, uh, we had the uh, Office of Strategic Services, which was the forerunner to the CIA. It was a civilian intelligence organization. Um, they recruited people from, uh, I believe all branches, but mostly from the army. Uh, and they set up, they had uh, Jedburgh teams and they had, uh, they called them operational groups, our OGs. So the Jedburg teams were three man teams that would go in, uh, they would parachute behind enemy lines and mm. they would do exactly that. They would link up with the resistance and their job was to train them to figure out how to equip them, uh, and then, uh, coordinate all of their actions with, uh, what higher headquarters wanted them to do. Then the operational groups, they had a very similar mission. Uh, they made, they were, I believe they're around 15 men per team. Yeah. Uh, they were made up of guys who were like from the countries they were going to. So they had language and cultural skills. Uh, and again, they would work with the locals there to action, whatever targets uh, again needed to be hit. So uh, anyway, so that was going on in world war two. And then you have of course D day where the conventional forces land. And then right. uh, the, the resistance uh, being organized by the Jedbergs and the OGs and everybody, they, they all worked together with the conventional forces as they swept across Europe. Weren't we landing in D-Day and then abs actually landing somewhere else as well? And we kind of needed that. I read something like well, that. We had well, faked it hard. Yes. Yeah, the area. We, what, 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 did we fake? But we still did we needed fake that. Deep, like, did that we beat? fake Omaha and then slam Normandy? Or am I fucking that up? The other way around. Uh, I don't know. I, I, uh, dude, I'm not. So, uh, they were trying to <laughs> same. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. They were trying to confuse the Germans as to where they were actually going to land. Right. So... They built up this ghost army on the south, the southeast corner of England. Uh, with, with the inflatable shit, right? The, yeah, at the yeah, okay. Pas de Calais. So Normandy that was, was the, actually the yeah, land. Normandy was the actual target. Yeah. But right. they, so they were trying to trick the Germans into thinking that they were going to land at Calais, which was like the shortest distance across English Channel. So it's the most direct route. Makes the most sense to go there. And uh, so again, they had this huge ghost army that they built up, inflatable tanks, inflatable trucks, a bunch of people just That's play so acting. Sick. That was, that was, was that, was that, I don't know, it sounds so stupid, but was that Patton's idea? <laughs> Am I stupid? Am I stupid for saying I'm, that? I'm honestly I mean, not sure who's idea I don't know if you're stupid now, but that's just a weird one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was Patton. Was that his idea? I honestly thought was it was Patton. Patton. Was that Patton? Was that Patton? Patton's always thinking it was Patton. I'm pretty sure it was Patton. 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 I, I you know what? Put them tanks on like a drone, and then they will see some flying tanks. They'll be real scared then. <laughs> <laughs> Patton's 
was crazy. I mean, we have a producer that is not doing a goddamn thing. Could be Googling and helping me out. <laughs> He's got YouTube up. He's looking up stuff. I, I mean, I can't bitch. do any. The TV's not on, so Look, it's just like. Look, he's got to watch a sniper. <laughs> he said, watch a sniper bullet hook shot. <laughs> what, is he, watch, what is he watching? Wanted over there? I don't know. He looked up sniper bullet trace. Sniper. Earlier we were talking That's about stuff, but, then, but then, yeah. the TV wasn't on, so I was like, all right, it wasn't no, really. No, you're right. Yeah. The TV should be on. Yeah. Yeah. It's all yeah, good. It's all good. Okay, what was anyway. the question again, Brent? <laughs> was it Patton's idea to fake? Was it Patton's idea to fake? You know what? I'll do it myself. Fuck off. Was it Patton's idea for the fake? Okay, whatever. Yeah. Brad's okay. doing it. Okay. So, after World War II, uh, the OSS goes away. And 1947, the CIA is created. And initially, they take on that role Look of ready to type. Uh, working with indigenous fighters uh, in a foreign country. Uh, so, in 1952, some guys that had been a part of the OSS, they were still in the Army. Colonel Aaron Bank was one of them. Uh, he stood up the 10th Special Forces Group in 1952. And that's generally considered the creation of Army Special Forces. Um, Again, same mission uh, during a time of war. Uh, special forces teams are designed to go behind enemy lines, work with an indigenous force, train them, equip them, and eventually go forth. And isn't that a Green Beret thing? Yes, literally. Yeah, so th that's why you have to like kind of know what three different languages, probably minimum. Uh, you're, you're only required to learn one. Oh, which I'm very so thankful two. for. Yeah, two. Yeah. English and then whatever other yeah. language they give you. What, what, did, you, did, yeah. what did you pick? When you uh, I mean, not that you, I know, not that you're fluent. Or or you, I'm not going to ask you are to you, do it. Are I'm you not. picked or are you assigned? Uh, you so you do get to. Uh, so just like with MOSs, you get a wish list that you fill out once you are selected. Yeah. And then it is assigned to you. So generally, they try to take into account your wish list. However, it ultimately goes off the needs of whatever your special forces needs. So you're not learning some mowing, bud. Ebonics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're not going to war with Hawaii. <laughs> Jamaican, <laughs> but I'm going to live there one day. <laughs> Learn Jamaican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <And back. Rush. laughs> this blood clot. Get the whole crew so coming. So what, what's your language? Uh. I'd rather not say. Okay. okay. It's fine. fine. Oh, yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah. Whatever you don't want to say. Because uh, that's just another thing to little, whittle it down. He yep. doesn't need to and say I don't want to add shit. <sighs> yeah. So let's just fast forward a little bit okay. into what you're doing now. Uh, well, what you just did, let's put it that way. You, you, you just spent a lot of time overseas. You are very familiar with the, the Asian theater. What's going on out there that we need to worry about? <laughs> Jake. The Asian theater. <laughs> The Asian you theater? Me, I mean, it's just recorded. It's not no, live. No, no, no. Theater is... is well, is, he said Asian, so I, mean, I don't want him to give away anything. I mean, it's like so, half the world. I mean, the Department of Defense is uh, conducting a pivot to Asia. We have been for the last couple of years yeah, because we right. realized Afghanistan was winding down. Iraq was winding down. Uh, our focus on the global war on terror was going away. Uh, and now we're realizing we have these nation state actors that we have to worry about Russia, China, North Korea, Iran. Uh, and these guys are a much bigger threat to us now than say Al Qaeda or ISIS. I know they're all together, but who's the biggest threat to us? Do you think the scariest threat? How about that? Personal opinion would be China. Let's say yeah, it's going to be the one with all the people, right? Well, yeah. no, because I mean, Russia has all the nukes. <laughs> yeah. Russia, Russia definitely has a lot of nukes. As soon as they go down, they're just like, all right, we'll see you all. I'd, I'd, be willing, I'd be willing to see how much, how many of those have actually been maintained over the years, though. Yeah, one, one like just barely opens. Just, it's, it's, like, it's, it's, like that, it's like that box of M80s that you buy that doesn't yeah. leave the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but okay. ta Taiwan is a, is a is a big thing right now, right? We're, 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 we're afraid. Yeah, China we're afraid, has said they're taking Taiwan. We're afraid, by, we're afraid of it. Which is we're afraid of this coming. Twenty seven. Yeah. yeah, that's coming. Yeah. That's coming. We have to worry about that. So yeah. anyway, so uh, China. I mean, with Russia, we're seeing like what's going on in Ukraine. Competence. I mean, that's that's a whole other can of worms to get into. But what we're seeing is is Russia really that scary? I mean, right. aside from their nukes, still, yeah, kind of scary. Yeah. It would be a always yeah. It would be a terrible fight, is what it would be. However, I mean, I I believe our military is superior to theirs. You're sending a couple of Raptors, right? Be done with it. <laughs> I mean, kind of like that. I mean, it'd be done. <laughs> Right? Just 10 of them. <laughs> and then 10 come back, 10 go out. Over and over. What are they going to do? <laughs> Hit that big red button. Hit the Kremlin. Like, we can't take any more of these right. raptors. 
All right, we so. give up. <laughs> I know, just please stop with the Raptors. Yes. They're awesome. I agree, but stop, please. <laughs> I mean, aside from, I mean, nuclear weapons, uh, China obviously has the world's largest military. They are the world's most populous country, and they have aspirations of surpassing the United States and becoming the, the superpower of the world. They want that 1990s U.S. like monopolar... Like we are it, we run the show and everybody has to kind of cater to what we want. Mm -hmm. Um, They have this whole thing, great book out there. I can't remember the name of the author to save my life called the hundred year marathon. Um, This guy worked, uh, I believe in the state department. Uh, He was a diplomat, a fluent Chinese speaker, went to China a lot. And so he kind of has like a feel for, uh, for like Chinese sentiment. And one of the things that, he discovered was yes, they do have this idea that uh, by 2049, I believe, which is a hundred years from when Mao took power in China uh, by 2049, they want to be the number one country in the world. And what's most scary about the Chinese is they have patience. Yep. They, they're not Vladimir Putin where he's, he knows like he's been in power a while. He doesn't know how much longer he has. Exactly. So he's striking <laughs> while he has yeah. the ability. He must put his name in history. Dave. Ah, motherland. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Whereas in China, they're like, oh, now is not the time. Okay, I'm going to set this up. I'm going to move the ball, you know, another two yards forward, to, to use a football analogy. Right. Uh, and you know what? Someday my grandson or yep. my great grandson yep. will actually cross into the end zone. <laughs> yeah. China's that really, really old guy in the first kill bill that just likes to throw his real old goatee over his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah they're the, they're That's the long him. game. They've been in the long game forever. Exactly. And they're very smart and they're making very, very good moves, especially in the monetary policy that I think... I must like, say, don't they own the U.S. government? Like, no, don't we own they, them they, like they trillions they of dollars? They don't. They, they, own they, they, they own some of our debt. The biggest, the, got the biggest person that owes most of the U.S. debt is the U.S. taxpayer. Oh. Yes. Via bonds and other things that we've bought over the years. But yeah, um, they do own some of our debt, sure. Okay. But well, that, that's normal, though. A lot of yeah. countries will own debt from other countries. Like, we own some of China's debt. Oh, uh, all right. And like again, that's just a normal thing that happens. Uh, but yeah, we do... Again, the biggest debt that we owe is to, honestly, our children and our grandchildren because we, yes. I say we, uh, because ultimately it's our elected leaders who are representatives of us. Uh, yeah, every dollar that gets printed is, is somebody had to, to pay for it. Exactly. And, and eventually the, there will be a reckoning on that. I mean, you can't escape the laws of economics. Right. So China knows that. And so yeah. does Russia. And they're playing a very, very cool like monetary game where they it's a legitimate attempt at undermining the the reserve currency of the world which is the u.s dollar right now i think it's going on and if it works out right that they, they have a legitimate shot at doing something like against so they're it. okay with like whatever the chinese dollar in, is and like the ruble being shit right now it's not it's the not ruble though. has went down and now it's almost at all-time highs against the euro already really yeah because they took the dude the sanctions they just shook them off and said we don't care we actually produce things in this country we we make stuff we have oil we're going to sell it. Right. We don't care. We don't care. Right. And it's, it, they call it our, everyone's bluff. And right. Russia did. And China's just waiting. And between those two countries, if played correctly, and if something doesn't happen, there is a legitimate chance that they could change the way the world operates right now financially. There is a legitimate, in, in my opinion, chance that that could happen. So maybe it's not going to happen yet. China might be waiting longer, you right. know, because they, you know, they just, they're playing that long game. So I think that's cool that you, you brought that up, but I want to read that book. So I want to, I'm going to It's Michael, Pil- Michael Pillsbury, by the way. Yes. Michael yes. Pillsbury. Are we going live? Are we live? Jake, we no, we're going to, but we know. We got daddy. What? We get yeah, we're going to a break uh, and then. But, uh, but I, I am interested before we do go live. Um, Which everyone's got to be real careful. Right. Which we have, we've been fine. I just, I, I'm, I'm not asking like for details of anything you've ever done, but like, what's the coolest place you've been on this planet? And then, where do you want to go on this planet? Golden Beach. Right. <laughs> Besides you know, Golden Beach. You know, so oh, water, 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 water. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? <laughs> Waterview Drive. He did win the Golden Beach 5K in its initial year, I think. Dang. Dang. Give away Big Pop. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's see. Oh, that's man, my girlfriend probably definitely ran in that thing, too. Somebody's going to look it up. <laughs> Who no. was their first winner? Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's easy. It's an easy one. They'll find him out right away. I did give that away. Yeah. We've never written it down. Gosh, ever. I, <laughs> I, 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 
that now. <laughs> just we'll hold a beep on it. No, you don't. We're talking about facial I recognition. Need edit, I need an edit list for you on here. You sure. really don't. He operates in the world as we know it now. Like, that's nothing. Yeah, anyway. Well. So, real talk. Coolest place I've ever been. Yosemite National Park, California. Really? Yeah. Yes. I want to go 100%. there. That's tight. I'm I so pumped see, I you picked see a place in America. Petrified forest. Can we all take a trip to go camp in the desert? California. We can't even play golf. I all know. Yeah. You're right. No, I know. We can. He won't. No. I'm going out of town tomorrow. What time are you leaving? I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Actually, leaving tomorrow morning. Okay. Early. Okay. 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 <laughs> Not like Brent. All right. Look cool. at his face. Cool. He looks so scared. It's a joke. Remember when you were leaving early? You weren't leaving early? Yeah, because I lied to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a joke. Coolest place you want to go that you haven't been? Uh, Don't I say do, Ukraine. Don't do say like, Ukraine. <laughs> Kiev. I mean, a <laughs> real talk, that'd be pretty dope. Is Japan <laughs> is Japan cool? Think? Would you want to go to Japan? I've had some friends, friends, I've had some friends there go there for, there for work. Cool? I, w- I, would love cool. I would love is to go to Is it too claustrophobic? It ain't that cool. I would love to go. I've been there a bunch. I know someone else in this room that's been there a bunch. Um, but Nighthawk? Yeah, Nighthawk. Um, is it cool? That's not where you want to. That's, I mean, you would never pick no, that. Right? No, but I, mean, I, I was just asking, is I it cool? I pick like Hawaii well, over that. Yeah, I got to say, Middle East is definitely out. Oh, um, yeah, dude. Rocks and the heat. Sandy buttholes. I hate the desert. 100%. Yeah, me too. It's You're the right. worst. Well, it's, um, it's nice on our front. Uh, uh, I'd say place I'd like to go see the most would be South America, like Patagonia. Ooh, that's a, that's a good one. You just want to go fight the cartel. Right. He's from I mean, here. I played Ghost Recon Wildlands, man. Why? I want to go live that game. We were on that blast. for like a year. That game was so fun. <laughs> like we were playing. I took out like, every base. There was like five of us playing together. That was no, a lot no of fun. No one that pissed me off. So they had like endless supply of men. I would take out a base. I'd come back an hour later, be full of men again. I, I, I never finished the game. Oh, I didn't finish it. Yeah, I just kept killing people. He's like top ranked in uh, Call of Duty. Oh, this okay. guy. top 100,000. <laughs> wow, I didn't know I was in here with a celebrity. Yeah, you are. So. <laughs> Respect. We're about to have our- I'm not allowed to use my name either. We're about to have our own G Fuel. <laughs> We're about to have our own G Fuel code. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you guys all sit around and play that a lot or what? So when I first got to my team, we played a lot of PUBG. So that's cool. We were but actually is it, is it PUBG a phone game? No. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is, but it was originally. But you guys were probably playing on your phones. We were playing on our phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were we were actually out Get like controllers. Very fun. We we're out in a big training exercise. We were just one small part of it. Uh, we were kind of in a lull, but we're still like out in the woods and, uh, we had our own little thing we would do where you'd you'd go, that was like the call. Like, (laughs) okay, everybody pull out your phones. First four people to actually get on and log in would play. (laughs) (laughs) Whoever, whoever didn't get in had to like continue. Yeah. You just had to to sit there and wait. Watch. I'd be so mad if they, they won. (laughs) And I wasn't on to win. Well, why weren't you making the noise and have your phone already out? I'd already, I'd always have it. <laughs> Just always have it out, ready to go. <laughs> I'd be making the noise all the time. <laughs> well, play it again, guys. Like, so, dude, I had to work. We we would occasionally win, but it was only times where it was like 90 bots. Yeah, yeah. And then That's hopefully the bots would kill off all the actual players, and yeah. then we would just somehow <laughs> luck our way into winning. Yeah. So now it's now it's freaking um, uh, Warzone. That's the big one. Yeah. It went forever, forever will be, I guess. So. I haven't played a first person shooter since you're missing out. second advanced warfare. You're, that one sucked. You're, you, you, you're missing out though. It's so fun. The one I have is, is pretty tight. Modern warfare is great. You missed no, it. I mean, no, 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 second, modern warfare too now. Second though. modern warfare I missed. Yeah. Okay. So there was, that was original. That was, uh, that was the one that 2006. Got, the one that got everybody to go out by yes. PS3s to start playing together. Yep. That's so, the last okay, one I played. So what happened now is he has modern warfare. It's yeah. the, it's the first like, Back to realistic ish game, yeah. Because yeah. no one's running around sliding on their knees yeah, anymore. Jumping hundred feet, jumping hundred feet in the fucking air. I, I do in the game, but like, dude, I think it'd be so funny to make a video of you running around like that and then like sliding constantly, and jumping. <laughs> I think I, it'd be so funny, like in gear, you like full setup. Take it'd that be back so to funny. your uh, your team and, and tell them to make one. Yeah. It'd be so funny. So basically, you would just like get in the slide position and like and and and, and post oh, edit. You would slide yeah. them. <laughs> So you just do all the slides and stuff. So fine. Yeah, that would be funny. Up next is Modern Warfare 2, though, after two different games, and they're making one every year. Now they're making them every two years. Uh, Boring talk. Anyways, Modern Warfare 2 is going to be sick. Do you have anything you want to tell us? We're going to uh, take a break and go live and then, like, just c- c- continue the conversation, but yeah. do you have anything you want to tell us, um, you know, <laughs> off off screen? I mean, I could be on screen, but, you know. It, I mean, it'll be on screen. What do you mean you want to tell us? How about I don't know this? anything you want to say that you haven't said. Uh, what, okay, so, uh, um, what? What is the American public 
What do you think the American public is not scared enough of? That's a really good question. That, that shit. is happening in this day and age. That's a good question. Um, I mean, pre, pre-COVID, that would be a totally different answer. Yeah. Because, I mean, nobody was ready for anything that disrupted uh, like normal Society. daily life. Yeah. Like, we have a very, very bad case of just short-sightedness and normalcy bias just as a people. Uh, we, everybody has a very comfortable life generally. I mean, I'm not speaking for everyone, but Absolutely. most, most Americans have a very comfortable life and most Americans are uncomfortable with the thought of being uncomfortable. So like, I mean, we have glamping now, um, yeah, yeah. you have, I don't know anything about that. I mean, yeah, it, most people don't ever actually have to be uncomfortable if they don't want to be. And, uh, I think that's sad. Because if you're never uncomfortable, then you can never really appreciate being comfortable. Or grow. So uh, now my wife will absolutely make fun of me when I do this, but there was a while there where I would just, you know, be at home, uh, sitting on the couch. I would put on my sweatpants, put on a hoodie and put on my nice soft, like polar tech beanie that was issued to me. And I would just sit on the couch and like, maybe just have like a, like a soft pillow or a soft blanket or something. And she'd be like, what is wrong with you? It's not cold in here you know what? I'm enjoying being warm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Leave right. me alone. Right. <laughs> but so, yeah. I mean, again, I think that's one thing that a lot of Americans typically are, they don't take enough time to be uncomfortable. Yeah. When um, Phil takes a jog, he doesn't just jog. When Nighthawk takes a jog, he doesn't just jog. God dang it. <laughs> he said we can use his name. No, I got to block. I got to edit it out now. He, he puts like weights all over his body. Uh, Runs with weights on his ankles and wow. knees and back and just like, you know, Wait, kills us. Hey, hey, I got a question, serious question though. When you're running, balls or feet or the heels? Balls. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. No, there's, that's actual like thing. Like some people run heels. Yeah. So. so when I was younger, when I would run, I would uh, do a heel strike. And that's what I do when it's killing my legs. That's why I think I'm doing it wrong. Absolutely. Yeah. And then like, I would always have issues like with my hips, my lower back. And then, uh, when the whole barefoot shoe thing became a thing. Oh, it's, oh, oh, is that God. good for your knee? The Tevas? It, it can be. It can be. It's I not right for, for everybody. Me. I'm a Neanderthal. Um, but when that became a thing, I was like, oh, hey, man, those shoes look pretty cool. So yeah. I, got a, I got a pair because they look cool. Yeah. Very quickly realized you got to adjust your gait when you do that. So I switched to more of like a midfoot strike. Uh, you know, more that just like that kind of trendy thing that was taken off. And I noticed that my run times were getting better. Uh, and I was having a lot less pain. So now like I only buy like the barefoot style shoes because that's honestly, that's what I like. It's, it's what I've, okay. what I've been accustomed to. I've been running the toesy them. ones, not the toesy ones. Um, barefoot cell but the, shoes. But the shoes are very minimal. Yeah. Right? Minimal shoes. Yeah. 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 Uh, again, that's it. What's work. It works for me. It works for my feet, works for my gait, my body. Uh, obviously again, it's not the right answer for everybody, but I really like it. And that's, that's what I do. Do you, you ever run like? So look, I'm looking at him. Right? I, I I looked up proper running techniques. I, I believe it or not, I did not used to be this fat. I was actually in shape there for a while. And I did look up proper running techniques back in the day, and like, um, uh, the one thing I read was like to have your mouth like almost semi open, and like a like a relaxed jaw, like a, uh, and it would like bounce with you when you <laughs> ran, and like also like hey, you, limp arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. So, I do the T Rex arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't do the mouth thing. Okay, Dude, I just sometimes, sometimes I run like this sometimes too. Yeah. Sometimes I hold my That's phone. How, sometimes what, I hold my phone so it has a light if on it. Ever seen me run? run it's gonna be that, but you're probably not gonna see it again. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, honestly, the 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 where I live just gets smaller now that I'm getting a little bit better. Yeah. It's like all right, I'm doing this a little quicker. It's only it's only two miles, I guess. If we go back there and then over there and over there and like suddenly like that was really hard no, last year no, it's easy that was kind of like yeah what else gotta do it twice <laughs> oh that's true but it's boring <laughs> I only see the chickens once <laughs> so anyways that was fun Nighthawk uh, we're gonna go live now Nighthawk and uh, I don't know just maybe take some questions and then actually just bullshit the whole time I hope Andy Carl's on I want yeah, to talk shop we yeah. got some people that will join and ask okay. questions hopefully nice yeah and if not just whatever we'll have the we'll TV on and stuff I'll set us up to where we'll we hang out for an hour Yep, so we appreciate you all. Uh, Happy Monday.
name is Brand. I love wiener dogs and the jukebox, man. I always cause a shake up. Yeah, my name is Shaker. The sheep need to wake up. Government is gay for us. Love America, which is more fancy than third world parachute.